First of all, thanks for stopping by the Micron booth at the first day of the Embedded World show. And uh, my name is Sean Holliday, and I'm the director of AI solutions at Micron. So by a quick show of hands, how many people know that Micron is actually working on AI? Oh, so it's, it's, it is new. So we've invested in a company called Ford Next back in 2019. And we're actually building an AI processing solution specifically focused for the edge. So the next few minutes, I'm going to walk through that, a little bit of the background, why we're doing this, what's going on in the industry. And, um, and then if there's any questions at the end, I'll, I'll take uh, time for questions. Okay, so first thing at Micron, our tagline is intelligence accelerated. So if you're familiar with AI, AI is all about data flow efficiency. So everything we're doing at Micron, as you follow what we're doing in memory, what we're doing in storage, it's about optimizing those solutions to enable data flow, whether it's being stored for long-term in NAND or it's being utilized in DRAM, for example. So a key focus area. But what, what I'm here to talk about is our investment in AI acceleration. So we're actually building processors today called our Deep Learning Accelerator um, that will be available latter part of this year to early customers for evaluation. But um, part of what I'm going to talk about today is where we're positioning our products in the market, some of the key features and, and functionality. But before we do that, why are we even getting into AI? And you know, AI is one of the, the biggest technology movements here in many decades. Obviously, embedded world, IoT, machine to machine, a lot of my background has been there. But AI is really the major trend moving forward. Some of the things on this slide, by 2030, $15 trillion economic impact to the global economy. Over 700 billion invested in IT infrastructure from the edge to the cloud uh, for AI. Um, 80 billion in accelerators, and that is the number, the, the products that we're building is going into that market. So these are, are accelerators that will go into compute platforms, whether it's an embedded system, whether it's automotive, uh, whether it's uh, in the cloud, to run AI workloads, accelerate to compute for those AI workloads. And if we look at uh, how this is being broken up, in 2025, about 48% of the market is going to be video and image processing. We're seeing that transition. Today, a lot of the, the compute is being utilized for natural language processing. That's starting to transition, especially on the edge. If you think of embedded world, think industrial applications, worker safety, um, uh, applications in retail, applications in automotive, for example, they're all visual based. So a lot of the compute is going to be visual. And of course, there's analytics and language. Um, one of the trends that we're going to see going forward is what we call um, multi-model or multi-modal networks where you're combining all three of these, thus increasing the need for, for further processing in memory. Another key part of this is that the vast majority of processing will be inferencing. That means actually running the AI workloads, in, in the case of video, actually doing detection, recognition, classification type workloads. 64% um, of this is going to be on edge networks, and I'll talk a little bit more about uh, the location of those. And then 60% of these are going to be com compute and power limited, but 40% is going to be memory and bandwidth limited. And that's where Micron steps into this as well, because one of the reasons we're investing the time and effort to build AI processors is to really understand the workload impacts on the memory needs and the NAND needs. Uh, we're talking bandwidth limitations. A lot of the networks, as you start looking at larger transformer type models, and especially in training uh, AI networks, you run into memory bandwidth limitations that limit the performance of the overall workload. That's a key focus area for us as well. And another key trend is that by 2025, over 50% of the platforms that are out there, especially in the embedded side uh, that we're seeing here at Embedded World, will be running AI workloads. In some segments, it's close to 100% already, but moving forward, over 50% of those platforms will be running some sort of AI workload, thus we will need some sort of optimization or capabilities for AI networks uh, overall. So let's talk about a little bit what's going on with the trends and it's impacting the design. Um, this is a framework we use at Micron, so looking at you know, devices from the sensor endpoint all the way to the cloud and in between. The things that we're seeing here, and as you mentioned, I, I talked earlier about video image processing, language processing, analytics. The dark gray areas are where these are being processed today. But what's happening here over the next four to five years is that these workloads are shifting left. They're coming out of the cloud, they're coming out of the enterprise, they're coming out of the, 
uh, network servers, for example, and moving to these endpoint devices integrated into the sensor. There's actually companies here today, especially I believe there's an embedded vision area of the show, you're starting to see AI compute integrated into the image sensor itself, um, doing initial processing for those. So, uh, you know, complex workloads, um, changes in privacy, security, um, you know, a big trend in embedded area is reducing the operational expense of sending data back and forth from the device to the cloud. So you bring the compute to the device. Same requirements here in AI as well. So with that said, what is Micron doing? Um, as I mentioned earlier, we acquired a company called Ford Next in 2019. That was an AI processing core. We're just getting ready to release to early customers our first set of products based off of that. Um, the key thing that we have done that you won't see from anybody else in the industry is that we've integrated GDR6 into our AI processing cores. The vast majority, I'd say 90 plus percent of AI solutions are using LPDDR4 or LPDDR4X. Uh, um, uh, we went ahead with uh, graphics capable memory so you mentioned earlier that memory bandwidth bottleneck, we wanted to eliminate that. So we're coming to market with a product that's gonna be 40 tops at 8-bit integer with GDR6 memory in M.2 and PCIe form factors. Our PCIe card will be available first, that's what we'll be sampling, but then we'll be coming out, if you guys wanna look here later, we have our M.2 cards in a couple different flavors. These are really what's meant to go into the embedded product, small form factor industrial servers. Um, any small form factor type device where you need significant AI processing for the type of workloads I was talking about. So just a real high le level um, about what our architecture looks like. Um, you'll see, especially in embedded space, you'll see a lot of really large SOCs. Um, SOCs that incorporate um, you know, multiple ARM cores, uh, uh, video codecs, uh, Ethernet interfaces, you know, really to be a fully embedded platform running a real-time OS. We've built a really simple accelerator that is meant to go into a hosted environment. The reason we did that is for flexibility because we can combine the capabilities of our accelerator with more flexibility and programmability of the host and do this in a heterogeneous compute. So we can run part of the workload on a host, run the necessary part of the workload on our accelerator and kind of get the best uh, of both worlds. So it's a very simple accelerator. We're not doing um, uh, you know, image signal processing. We're not doing uh, video codecs uh, in our product. That's all within the host itself. So it makes for a very simple and, and you know power effective and overall very efficient solution. So again, our, our breakup is just a number of different clusters, typical um, you know interfaces, GPIO and other serial interfaces for connecting the sensors and so forth. And of course, you know when you look at AI, hardware is just one part of it. And I would say, even though I come from a silicon background building hardware, about 20% of the problem is solved in a hardware device. The rest of 80% is in the software, the tool sets you build. And if you don't have amazing software, you can have amazing hardware, but if those two don't come together, you're not gonna be able to really achieve the type of capabilities that you're looking for. So we've invested a lot of time in making a very simple software toolkit, um, something uh, that's gonna support traditional AI frameworks like uh, PyTorch um, and TensorFlow. Everything we do is based off of Onyx. Um, these are all open source tools, and we have a, a very specific compiler uh, that will build the runtimes and deploy to our hardware. And one of the things we focused on is ease of use. If you've engaged with data scientists or if you engage with developers, one of the biggest challenges they have is taking that model that's been developed uh, by the data scientists and then putting that over to the developers who may have to go from a, a model that was running on a system that costs four hundred dollars to $500,000, for example, down to something that runs on a system that's only $250. So there's a lot of optimization that has to be done, a lot of modifications and changes in the software. We've really focused on making that as simple as possible um, with our software tools. Some of the examples, um, obviously automotive. Um, today, we're not focusing on the, um, the ADOS portion uh, with our accelerator but we definitely can go into driver monitoring. We've done some work with um, partners, um, OEMs, and tier one manufacturers to showcase uh, driver monitoring systems. One of a really cool demo we have, and fortunately we don't have it here at the booth today, is doing multi-factor authentication. So think about walking up to your car. Um, it not only will recognize you by your face, you can do hand gestures, a number of different things, 
So by the time you get into your car, it is automatically set to your preferences, for example, um, or control other aspects. But obviously, you know, driver monitoring systems looking for um, gaze detection following the pupils to see if the driver is distracted, allowing the car to take appropriate action and so forth. All of those type of workloads can run on something like this as well. A second area, and again, it, it, this is more in the industrial space, and this is growing quite a bit, is worker safety. And utilizing visual AI workloads to detect, are workers following our policies for wearing helmets, for wearing vests? Are they following COVID protocols? Are they within a geofenced area of a, um, a manufacturing pod, for example, and, and moving into harm's way? All of that can be done with AI workloads and is being done today, but it requires acceleration. You know, those workloads can run on a standard CPU or GPU, but not very efficiently. And so the focus of the industry now, and including what we're doing at Micron, is being able to run these workloads much more efficient in a very small form factor device like this, leaving your host to run more of the rest of the workload in traditional applications. So with that said, the things I'd like you to walk away with is when you hear Micron, think AI now. So Micron is not only doing memory, we're not only doing storage, we're doing AI processing. We're doing that primarily to engage and understand how AI processing is going to impact, excuse me, impact the needs for memory and storage. But we're also building a solution that we're going to put out into the market in the not too distant future where you can use Micron processing, integrate it into your industrial PCs, your platforms, medical devices, automotive devices, and so forth. So that's a key thing I want you to walk away with on this. Um, and it's all about on the edge. The workloads are moving to the edge, especially video and image processing. They're moving from the cloud to the endpoint devices in the camera itself, for example. That requires very you know, highly efficient, low power, small form factor devices like this that can go into those platforms. And the last point is, is that you know, we believe that as AI transitions, we're going to see different types of AI coming out. You may have heard processing in memory or, pr or processing at memory, where you're bringing the processing at memory uh, closer together, and eventually analog processing in memory. These are all key technologies that we see from a, a research and development perspective that we're investing time and effort. So it's not just about digital logic. It's eventually moving and putting and bringing memory and processing together into a single silicon architecture.